there is a second document that gets collected or signed, and it is called, and here we go, you guys all have heard this term, the second document that gets signed, boy, that was terrible drawing, wasn't it? That's the database. Is called a mortgage. All right. Now, think back to the OR and the EE. This is one you have to understand. How many in your life? went out and got a mortgage all right you have not you have went out and gave a mortgage a mortgage is nothing more than a document that collateralizes or the book uses this real big fancy word called hypothecate your asset for the loan so in essence, everybody thinks this one's backwards, but you've been taught wrong all your life. You, as the consumer, are the mortgagor. You gave the mortgage to the bank. The mortgage is just the document saying, I will pledge my house as collateral for the IOU. Remember, you guys, when we talked about, there's two documents. This is the second one. The first one's the IOU, the second one's the mortgage. You gave the mortgage to the bank. So you are the mortgagor, the bank is the mortgagee. They accepted your mortgage. So people all the time go out and go, well, I got a mortgage. Nah, you actually gave one, but I get what you mean. You got money. You signed an IOU. You also gave a mortgage collateralizing the asset that you own. You guys heard the statement, one more payment and this baby's mine. One more payment and this baby's mine. That is not true on how we do mortgages. I own the house the second the deed transfers. Remember? Boom. I owe money to somebody called an IOU, but I own the house. This is like one of my favorite drawings I love to do on the board, and I hope we can get it done here. So here you are, here the bank is, the bank gives you money, you sign an IOU and you sign a mortgage to the bank. All right. So that is how our system works. This is called the lean theory system. Lean theory. The bank will go out and then put a lien on whatever asset you collateralized in the mortgage all right now here's something that's unique you can collateralize any property you want the bank does not care if i borrow money to buy a house on smith street in greenwood can i mortgage my house free and clear condo sitting in Miami, Florida? The answer is yes, I can. As long as that house in Miami, Florida is worth the hundred grand that I'm borrowing. So the bank would appraise which property? The Miami property because that is the collateral for the loan, it just so happens that most of us don't have a $100,000 free and clear property laying around to mortgage. The one we have 
is the one we just bought. So 99.99% of the time, you buy a house and borrow money at 12 Smith Street, you collateralize the house on 12 Smith Street. But theoretically, you could collateralize any of them as long as it's worth the money you borrow and the bank would appraise. Now, if you quit making payments, which house is the bank coming after? The one in Miami, right? Because that was the collateral, not the one in Greenwood. So whichever one you put the mortgage on is the collateral for the loan. Everybody understand what I mean by the word collateral? Collateral is an asset that you pledge as protection when someone loans you money. So this is called the lien theory system. Sometimes you will hear it called the two party system because there's only two parties there. You will always use the word mortgage with the lien theory. And this is how we in Indiana do deals. This is how we transfer houses. Let's see if I can do this. Now, when you pay the money back over the course of the loan, the bank will eventually give you what's called a satisfaction of the loan and you get to record that down at the recorder's office. And if you remember when we talked about the title section, I told you they look for the lien and the release. That's the release they would give you. When you make all 30 years of payments, they will release the lien and they will send you a document called a satisfaction of mortgage and you will record that at the recorders so that you will see a lien in 1980 and then a release in the year 2010. That's 30 years. Are we cool so far? There is a second way to transfer property. All right. Indiana does not use this method. Other states like Colorado do. I believe Texas does. This is called title theory. Go back to that color. Here you are. Here the bank is. The bank loans you money and you sign the IOU, but then watch this. You deed the property to some third party person in a deed of trust. Sometimes you hear it called a deed in trust. Does that look familiar to something that we've talked about previously? Remember the third way to own property was a trust and I talked about you deeding it into the trust and that trust has a trustee and all of that. This is called a title theory. This is how we in Indiana do cars. Now with a car, that statement's true. One more payment and this baby's mine. Because technically, in the deed of trust theory, who owns the property in this drawing? Let's go back and look at it. Who actually owns the property? The answer is, that person is the owner of the property, all right? Because we deed it into the trust. This person that lives in it, we talked about back before, is the beneficiary, and they get to live in the property, but the owner of the property is the trust. Now, 
when these guys pay their money back, the bank literally calls this third party person, that's the symbol for phone call, and they say, hey, deed the property back to that guy. So they deed the property back. Now, the $64,000 question for the day, what's the name of that deed? What's the name of that deed? The deed of trust. The, the deed of trust went from the trust door to the trust. When the trust deeds it back to the original person, it is called a, anybody? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> oh. A reconveyance deed. Remember, when the trustee deeds the property back to the original trustor, it is called a reconveyance deed. So that deed right here is called a reconveyance deed because it went back to the original trustor. Now, in this case, that person now owns the property free and clear. So the outcome on both scenarios is exactly the same. The bank loans you money, you pay them back, and then if you're in the lien theory system, the bank would send you a lien release. If you're in the title theory system, the bank sends you the reconveyance deed. So in both cases, you now have the property free and clear. One of them holds the deed in their state. We have no lien on our property in our state. I used to say it's like VHS and beta, but you guys are too young. So now it's like iOS and Android. All right. It's two different systems by which they can convey property. We use iOS, i.e. lien theory. Other states use title theory or the Android version. They both make phone calls. They just do it a different method. All right.